hey guys so the, uh, today we're going, going to be talking about SLR1 and LR0 parsing techniques and these are automatic parsing techniques and a bit more harder compared to uh, LL1 parsing table but on the other hand the, the advantage is that these are more powerful compared to LL1 uh, parsing technique and uh, it can detect syntactic errors much easily and earlier compared to LL1 parsing technique. This is a bottom-up parsing technique and it is a bit more complicated compared to L1. So as we are going to be moving on to the tutorial how to com compute the automaton that is required to compute the table which further is helpful for computing, uh, for, for checking whether a string can be accepted by the parser or not. Well, this is a really long process and I hope you can stick with me while, while I'm computing this, while I'm doing all the simulation. So yeah, let's get started. So we have a grammar like this and as you can see it's, it, it's an unambiguous grammar it ha doesn't have left recursion or left it does not uh, well, it, well it has left factoring but we don't need to eliminate the left factoring here because LR0 is LR0 and SLR1 techniques are a bit more powerful compared to LL1 in the sense that you don't need to always remove the recursion or remove the left factoring but if, if it's better if you do that so yeah Let's get started. So the first thing that we need to be get familiar with is that we have to write an augmented grammar. We have to have the augmented st augmented grammar for. Uh, we have to have one extra rule, which is called the augmented rule. And what it does is it just basically augments the start symbol. So we have S prime goes to E. E is the start symbol over here. So this is one extra rule that we have. This is required for reaching the accepting state, for accepting the grammar, for accepting the input symbol. Right. Now, and we also have this thing called dot, which will be keeping on moving after every symbol in order to get the, in order to get the accepting state. So let's get started. So when we have a dot before a variable, it means we have to always compute all the rules that the variable has. So this variable E has two rules over here, as you can see. So we need to compute those, we need to compute those. That means we need to bring those. This is called applying closure. So E goes to dot, T plus E dot is always at the beginning of the right hand side of the right of the leftmost symbol. So T plus E and E goes to dot T. Right now, uh, now that we have this, now as you can see, there is a dot before T. That means we have to always bring, we have to apply closure, and we have to bring all the rules that has T and that, that has T on the left hand side. So T is there. There is dot int star T and T goes to dot int and t goes to dot this right when we have a dot before a terminal we don't need to bring any rules because terminals are never on the left hand side of a rule they're always on the right hand side so we don't need to apply closure to terminals so yeah this is one state this is one state and we're gonna name it suppose um zero i zero or something we're just gonna name it i zero right now when we have input e on i zero so e what we get is s prime goes to e dot so we have reached an accepting state what we've basically done is on input symbol e we move the dot after that input symbol so after so which rules has e which rules has dot before e of course just this one so we move we move the dot after e similarly we move the dot after t so we have two rules like this so e goes to t dot plus e and e goes to t dot so we have another state here so this is i let's just name it i1 and this is i2 right now we have another input symbol int on int we reach t goes to uh sorry yeah t goes to int dot star t we just we just uh moving the dot after int and we have t goes to int dot right so as you can see t dot whenever we have dot at the end that means there is no more symbol after dot which this means that we have reached the accepting state for that particular rule so we have reached the accepting state for e goes to t dot t and t goes to int okay uh, we still have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four, three more rules left to reach the accepting state. 
augmented rule does not count because this that was not in our original grammar so that that is an accepting state of course that is the main accepting state that we're concerned about but but we can't finish the automaton until we've completed all the accepting states now let's just move uh, the dot after plus no, wait let me just finish all the computing all the input symbols for this so t goes to e now as you can see we have dot before e again which means we have to call whenever we have dot before a uh, variable we always have to call, we always have to bring we have to apply closure and always have to bring that rule again so e goes to we have to bring all the rules again it's a really tedious process that is why it's called it's more complicated compared to other parsing techniques i mean compared to the top down parsing techniques bottom up parsing techniques this is actually the easiest one of them all so yeah so now that we have a dot before the variable t, we have to we have to bring all the rules of t. Now let's move the uh, let's move the dot after star. What do we get? So after star we get t goes to int star dot t. Now as you can see we have to apply closure to t again and we have to bring in all the rules that has t in it. So t goes to uh, dot int star t t goes oh, sorry t goes to dot int and t goes to this right now this is uh let's name this i5 right now again let's just compute uh what happens when we bring the dot after plus we have e goes to t plus dot e. Uh, now we have to bring all the rules of e again, and this will be again like something like this. So let's just bring all the rules. So now let's move the dot after e. So after e, we get e goes to t plus e dot. So we have reached the accepting state for this rule, right? Now let's move the dot after t here for this. So t goes to int star t dot so we've reached the accepting state for this right so we've reached the accepting state for one two three four four rules we're still left with this we haven't started computing the accepting state for this yet so let's just compute it so whenever we have input uh, open parenthesis so we have t goes to dot E. Now, as you can see, whenever we have open parenthesis, we have dot t, dot e. Um, we have the dot before e. Now, again, we have to apply closure. But can you spot a rule, a state here that actually looks similar to what we are trying to do over here? So that means we have to bring all the states of. Uh, we have to apply closure to e, and we have to apply all this. We have to bring all the states of e, and then again, we have. When we do that, we get these rules, and then we have a dot before t. That means we have to bring all the states of t. So we could just not we don't need to recompute again we could just point it to this rule because this is the one that looks similar to this so to what we are trying to accomplish here so simply just point to i4 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 that's it you need to recompute you don't need to do an unnecessary computations again so that's done now let's just go back from what we are trying to accomplish here so when we have dot after e what happens so t goes to e dot so we have this one state right because it's before terminal we don't need to do a closure now what happens when you move the dot after closing parenthesis we have t goes to e and then dot so we have reached the accepting state for this so let's just number all the states so after numbering we get something like this we're still not done yet you could see here that we have computed what happens when we have input t for example in this state but what happens when we move the dot after int now if you can spot a state that actually looks to si look similar to what we're trying to accomplish here that is move the dot after int and with the dot is up before a star if you can spot a state like that we don't need to recompute it again as you can see here that that's what this is the state we get after we put the dot after int so uh, sorry uh, yeah, after int so if we if we just point this to the state uh, this is called i3 then we don't need to recompute over and over again so this is i3 right 
so now what happens when we have the dot after uh, so we have we're we done with what happens on input int we're done with what happens after on input t and wh what happens with input open parenthesis so this is done now let's see with this one what happens when we move the dot after t so when we move the dot after t let's see if you can spot a rule that actually looks similar to this this one of course so as you can see what happens we are moving the dot before a terminal so we don't need to apply closure we just applying we just applying uh, whatever states there are we don't need to apply closure we just need to apply uh, t uh, we just need to move the dot after that symbol and that's it we are done so we don't need to recompute again so we could just point it to i2 right what happens when we move the dot after int well we did co find a state like that so it's just basically we're just pointing it to i3 so i3 is the state on input int we have i3 now what happens when we move the dot after open parenthesis this this is the rule that we get after open parenthesis when we move the dot after open parenthesis we just get state i4 so just uh, point it to state i4 so on input open parenthesis this point to state point to the state i4 let's see if all the states are computed and all the states have are pointing to some other state or not with each in with, with e whenever we move the dot after each of the symbols so here we are done with moving the dot on input e what happens when we move the dot after uh, on input t just basically point to uh, where, where, wherever we have a rule that goes after input t uh, that has a that has a dot before the before the plus sign which is basically i2 so i2 and for this when we have the input int we just point to the state wherever we have this so i3 and again for this it will just point to itself as you can see when we put the dot after open parenthesis this thing happens we are again computing the closure 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 and we get this big old state so we just need to just point it to itself so it's a self loop that's it now let's see if we are done with all the states i guess we're pretty much done we're done computing for all the states over here pretty much so that's basically it for computing the automaton now this automaton is actually same for lr0 and slr1 as i've mentioned before the only thing that differs between the two is the table the table that we're going to be needing for parsing the string but other than that the computation of this whole automaton this complicated automaton is the same so this is how it looks of course there will be more states if you have a more complicated grammar then you would have more uh, states this is just 10 uh, 11 states which is not much if you i have computed uh, i have computed lr0 uh, and slr1 for a grammar that has about 25 states and you would know how big that was and how hard it was to keep track of all the states but yes i had to do that so yeah that's about it for this automaton stay tuned for the new for the next video which will be about computing the table on this grammar itself uh, and then after that the next video will be on parsing the string uh, of uh, LR0 and SLR1 uh, parse, uh, parser. So yeah, that's about it. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and good luck.